Texas, those from Oklahoma, uh, those from New Jersey as well as New York. We want to welcome all y'all to the Steerfield United Ministry service morning. Mm. God bless you. We love you. And we're praying this morning that this service can be a help to each and every one of you. Let us pray. Father God, this morning, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace. We come, oh God, thank you for your mercy, and we thank you for your grace. We ask this today, we have the Father, that thou just lift us up, Father God, with your mighty hands, Father God. Control our mind, bodies, and spirit this morning, Father God, that everything we do may lead us to you, Heavenly Father. We just are so grateful, Father God, to see this day, Father God. Realize, oh Heavenly Father, that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you this morning, Father, for those who are awake this morning, Father God, breathing in their right frame of mind this morning, Father. We pray for those who are traveling, Father God, to church service this morning, wherever it may be, those who are still at home. We are praying, Father God, for a new hope, a renewed spirit, even for this country, in the precious name of Jesus. So we just want to magnify you and glorify you this morning, Father God. And we also extend a, a good morning to those who are in Arizona, Father God, this morning, who are watching and viewing our service more of all. So we just thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, amen. Amen. All right. This morning, we want to look at something or uh, part of God's Word. Baby. And this part is a very, very unique part mm -hmm. of God's Word. We want to make sure that we understand time and day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a uh, portion of the day which is d d divided into sections. You have the morning hour. You have the afternoon hour, and you have the evening hour. But basically what we were going to look at today, we want to look at the fourth part, the midnight hour. The midnight hour. So the title of our message today is entitled, God Moves at Midnight. God Moves at Midnight. Some of y'all might have heard this saying before, but we're going to go through this same thing one more time. But I want you to understand the thing about what God is able to do at the midnight time or at midnight hour at the uh, minute past, so to speak. So we want to begin at the book of Exodus chapter 12, verses 25, and see some things that takes place at midnight, how God can move at the midnight hour. Now, some people don't believe that God is awake at that time of night, but he is because God says he never sleeps nor slumber. So we want to see exactly what's going on with God at this particular time. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 25, please read. And it shall come to pass, when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, mm -hmm. according as he hath promised, mm -hmm. that ye shall keep his service. Yes. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, mm -hmm. what mean you by this service? Now understand something. God is all, he's addressing Moses at this particular point. And he let Moses uh, 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 understand that there's going to be a time where a service must be held in honor of God. And that this service is being held and this church is going to want to know why is this being taken place. And you must be able to tell them what's going on. Now let us read on and we're going to continue to see exactly what is about to take place here. That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Mm. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. Mm -hmm. When he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. It's a time that is said how God delivered the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he want Moses to make sure that the children hear this and understand this about this deliverance. And this deliverance came at a certain time. Now listen. What, what, there's a scripture that talks about teaching your church. It said, and you teach them even when you sit at the dinner table. And I know some of you parents may not understand it, but this is why we in our household, when it comes down to eating dinner, put your phone down. Hmm. There's no phone at the dinner table. That's the time when we'll sit and we commune one with another. We teach one another. We understand one another. We find out what's going on with one another. There's a time and a season for all things. And so the, the word tells us that at that time, teach them even at the dinner table that they may know. And Lord knows we need to teach our children. We need to teach our children. So let's read on. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses mm -hmm. and Aaron. So did they. Now, it says and they went away and did as the Lord had commanded them there. In other words, they, they went and prepared themselves for the Passover. 
They went and prepared themselves for the Passover. Now listen, the topic is called how God moves at midnight. They went and prepared themselves for that midnight hour when God would begin to move. Now, let's read on. Verse 29. <laughs> and it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Mm. From the firstborn of Pharaoh mm. that sat on his throne mm -hmm. until the firstborn of the captain mm -hmm. that was in the dungeon mm -hmm. and all the firstborn of cattle. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt from the church of the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne. God has no respect of persons. Mm -hmm. He don't care if you're sitting on your throne. But at midnight he come to do what he going to do. There's a midnight hour when God moves. The Lord God moves at midnight. He moves at midnight. And, and it brings this thing in when he said, God has sent Moses to talk to Pharaoh. Seven times. He said seven plagues. He said seven plagues. Seven of them. Oh. Wrong hand. He said... <laughs> He sent seven <laughs> plagues to Pharaoh to get him to understand what he wanted to do. He wanted his people to be set free. <laughs> now listen, even as God wanted the children of Israel to be set free back then in Moses' day, he still said the same thing to us today. Mm -hmm. I want my people to be set free. And not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, and most of all, spiritually set free. And so as the Passover came, and as the firstborn of all throughout all Egypt were killed or destroyed or taken off from the earth, so must our first way of thinking, our native way of thinking, be taken away from us as well. In other words, there must be a change. Pharaoh did not change his mind. He was so hard-headed and stiff-necked, as God said, you're the hard-headed, stiff-necked people. That, I mean, come on. Would God have to whoop me seven times for me to get the point? Seven times? Sometimes it takes it. And, and actually, oh, amen, sometimes it takes seven times. But it took even more than that because even then, Pharaoh did not want to let them go. <laughs> he still didn't want to let them go. And when he let them go, he went chase them higher. And it was at midnight again when God came and rose up at that water on the side of that Red Sea and destroyed him. So what would it say? It said, church, that God moves at midnight. So when your midnight hour come and things seem to be so dim and dreary on you, don't think that God is not there because he's still there ready to move in your behalf. That's the kind of God you serve. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't change. What seemed to be impossible with man it's possible with me. I don't change. And as you can see, I am no respecter person. I took Pharaoh just like I took some of the rest of them. Amen. And because of what had happened, the firstborn of Israel being taken, or, or all the people around that, that time being taken, the blame was placed on Pharaoh because he was disobedient. He wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen. That God moved at midnight to deliver his people. Now, at least you understand this. He had told uh, Moses to tell his people to take a ram and sprinkle the blood on each side of the doorposts. Each side of the doorposts. That means that when the death angel come through and they saw the blood, they were passed by the house. Mm -hmm. Now, if the children of Israel had not put blood on the side of their doorposts, their firstborn would have been killed also. So it's so important to pay attention to what God is saying. It's so important to, to, to get into the word and understand what it's saying because if you don't, you'll miss it and you'll find yourself caught up at that midnight hour when God sent his angel through and either you're going to miss out or get caught up. Hmm. Amen. You want to make sure you're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, 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 that's one scenario about how God's moved at midnight. Now, we want to go to another one. We want to bring this thing from the old into the new. Because we had this thing about, that was the Old Testament. That was for them back then. It ain't for us right now. But God got other things. Remember we just said, God said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
what I did back there four thousand mm. years ago, I do right now. So, Exodus Old Testament, we finna go to Matthew, the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Have not I said it, would not I perform it the day of my coming? I'm not man that I should lie, nor the son of man I should repent. Those words that go forth out of my mouth, they should not return to me, boy. Mm -hmm. But they shall accomplish the things which I sent them and prosper in the way which I please. Mm -hmm. So we must begin to say, oh Lord, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not see it against you. Your word is the light of my path, feet and a, and a lamp unto my path. I walk by faith and not by sight, even in the midnight hour. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, let's go to verse 13, I mean verse 1, please. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened mm. unto ten virgins. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ten virgins, like ten innocent people, ten, ten, that's just ten innocent people, ten new converts. Mm -hmm. But five of them, even though they were new converts, they were wise enough to understand where they was going. And they know that it was at a, a, a specific time and a specific place that they need to be. And they understood that they may have to wait just for a little while. Mm -hmm. These five of them knew this. But five of them was what they call just foolish. Mm -hmm. Just foolish. Read on. Mm -hmm. That they were foolish, took their lamps, and took no oil with them. Mm -hmm. But the wise took oil in their vessels and their lamps. Yeah. See, 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 see. When, when, when you are going out to war, you have to make sure that you're prepared. You can't go on what they call half cocked. Because when you get out there half cocked, other words, someone said, you can't take a knife to a gunfight. That's right. You're going to lose every time. So the, 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 the five versions who was wise enough to know that where they was going, it might be a while before what they were expected to happen, happened. So they prepared themselves for that. They took some extra oil for their lamp. They were to make sure they had a light burning. And then the five foolish ones, they were like, I'm just going. I will, you know, somebody else going to help me. That's like this there, man. Sometimes we do foolish things thinking someone else will come to our rescue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do foolish things thinking that someone else is going to come and mm -hmm. save us. Sometimes we do foolish things thinking that someone else is their responsibility to bail us out. That old saying that goes back a long, long way. Poor planning on your part does not necessitate an emergency on my part. Mm. Plan right that you may live and learn for tomorrow. Amen. So, so four, five of them were foolish. Read on, please. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Mm. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. At midnight, there was a cry. Yo hoy there! The bridegroom is coming. Listen up, y'all. He's here. It's midnight. Read on. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Mm. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Listen, they trimmed their lights. Listen, if you ain't got no oil, you can't trim your light. That means you can't light it up. You can't. Turn it up no more. If you ain't got no gas in your house, you can't cook because you got a gas cold. If you got just a little gas, you're trying to cook real slow. That ain't going to do no good. You, everything can't simmer. Hmm. You got to put some power to it. So it said, so without all the trimming on your life, and the, the foolish one said, it's, it, 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 it's too late now. It, 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 it's too late now. Read on. But the wise answered, saying, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy mm. for yourselves. I will not give you my oil. Go and buy you some oil yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you mine and I run out. There was an old western movie on once where the, 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 the guy was, I think his horse or something, fell down and needed water and all that kind of stuff. He'll tell the man, give me some of your water. Give me some of your water, and we both, we, we'll just die here together, something he was saying. The man said, no, why don't I just take the water, drink it, and then hurry up ahead to get help and bring back some water? Mm -hmm. 
See, why don't I do that? So, 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 so the, the, the wise version was wise enough to know that they're going to need some extra oil. The foolish one thinking that I'm going to go out here and they're going to give me some of that anyway. It don't work that way. See, see, I am never supposed to sacrifice my relationship with God because of you. Mm. Understand, I am never supposed to sacrifice my relationship with God because of you. Don't sell myself short with God because of you. You didn't come prepared, that's your problem. But when God called me, I'm going to be ready. This is why I said that, 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 that we're going to be judged on individual basis. Mm -hmm. Individual basis. So now read on. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. While they went out to buy, the mid night hour, in other words, God moved at midnight and the bridegroom came at midnight. And it was too late. Church, don't let it be said too late that you missed the mark, that you missed the bridegroom, that you missed your calling, that you missed an opportunity to live gloriously and happily with God, that you missed a place in heaven, that you missed the street that paved and go. Don't let it be said because you are preoccupied watching football, playing cards, or playing games, or running the streets, or whatever the case may be. Just throw something out there. Don't let it be said that you miss God because you're preoccupied with the things of the world. Mm -hmm. As these five foolish ones did. It's too late now. Don't let it be said too late. Read on. Hebrew chapter 3 verse 15. Can you turn that real quick? Hebrew chapter 3 verse 15. There's a song that was written that said don't let it be said too late. So there's going to be a time when it's going to be too late. Chapter uh, 3, verse 15. Chapter 3, verse 15. Amen. You got it? Yes. All right, read from me, please. And that from a child, thou hast thou known the holy scriptures, uh -huh. which are able to make the wise into salvation mm -hmm. through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given... By inspiration of God. Yes. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. I'm sorry. Did I say Hebrew 15, 3 and 15? Oh, I'm sorry. I like that, though. I'm reading Timothy. I like that, though. <laughs> see, 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 this, see, this how God moved. Read that again. See, this how, this how God moved, though. <laughs> this how God moved. I'm just saying, you got to be prepared for yourself. You got to know for yourself. You got to know for yourself as you read it. Read that again. And that from a child. <laughs> Thou hast thou known that. Start back at the first one you was at. The first verse you read. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Come on. And that from a child, mm -hmm. thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. You got to know that your relationship with God is proof. You got to know that when the bridegroom comes, you are ready. You're done. Read on. Hmm. <sighs> which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Make you wise. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Tip five wise from the five foolish ones. Huh. <laughs> read me wise. Come on, read on. All scripture is given by inspiration mm. of God mm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and a subject for what? A subject for reproof. Reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness that you may become the children of God. Thoroughly furnished and prepared. Foolish. You can't be foolish. Jesus called a man a fool once. They said, Why did he call him a fool? Because he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. He was preoccupied with the things of the world instead of being occupied by the things of God. He was selling on the things of uh, uh, earthly things instead of being mindful of the heavenly things. Read that last part of that. This how God Ooh. moved, y'all. This how God moved. All scripture is given by inspiration. Given of God. by inspiration of God. And it's mm. profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished 
unto all good works. That the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly what? Furnished. Furnished in unto all good works. Unto all good work. That the man of God may be matured and prepared for all good works. Though five foolish virgins the midnight hour came, God moved at midnight, but they hadn't read the scripture, see? They didn't know that the scripture was profitable for reproof, for instruction in righteousness and doctrine. They didn't know that it was thoroughly punished there, that it was purified there, that it will make them righteousness in God. They didn't understand that. They just heard that somebody was coming by who performed miracles and things. I want to see if I can't get a miracle for more on me. Because I'm broken, I need some money. Maybe he give me some money. That's all they heard. Foolish. God moved at midnight. And they wasn't there to receive the goodie. Now let's go on back over here we in Matthew. Thank you, God, for taking us there. <laughs> Amen. Back over to Matthew. We was uh at ver 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 verse over here. Praise God. I believe are we in verse 13 now? Where we at? Amen. Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 25, verse 1 to those foolish versions. Mm -hmm. All right. And 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 in verse, verse twelve, I'm gonna read verse three. But he answered, said, "Verily I say unto you, I know you not." Mm -hmm. See, when God began to move at midnight, and you're not where you're supposed to be, and then all of a sudden you come, Lord, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait on me. You know, you catch a plane, and if your plane ticket said we're moving, boarding up at twelve o'clock midnight. Now, better yet, it said, we're taking off at midnight. 12 midnight, we're taking off. You can wait until 12 o'clock to get to the airport if you want to. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You're going to miss the plane. You're going to miss the plane. Oh, foolish virgin, you missed the plane. And you're going to say, and he's going to say, the plane, the captain's going to say, I'm sorry. Or that, 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 that uh, customer service person right there at the gate going to say, I'm sorry, the door is closed. You can't get in. We got no more room at this end. And you're going to miss out because you are not prepared. And then he said, many, many of the people today in the church are not prepared for God. I said, in the church are not prepared for Christ's return. They're not prepared. They're like the five yeah. foolish church. They're not prepared. You have people in church. They'll go to church every Sunday. Every Sunday. And why we use the phrase Sunday? Because most of us go to church on Sunday. But some of us go on Saturday. Some of us go all week long. We go five, some of us go five days a week. We got Bible study. We got Sunday school. We got choir rehearsal. We got this. We got that. We got this. We got all these things that we'll be in the church. We're faithful to being in the church, involved in the business of the church. But we're not faithful to be involved with Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Hear what I'm saying? We're involved in the business of the church or being in the church, but we're not careful to be in love with Christ. I heard a brother say one time, one time he said, you got to be in love with Christ. He said, not have a relationship, an affair, I mean, an affair with him, but have a relationship with him. And most people in the church today, they just have a a, 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 a love affair with the church, but they're not in love with Christ. They don't have that relationship. Why am I saying this? Because you cannot go to church and serve God and then come home and serve the devil. The foolish version was half and half. They was like striding the fence. They said that they want to see the bridegroom when he come, but yet they wasn't prepared because they're preoccupied. Do you remember Lot's wife? When she, when, when God pulled him out of Solomon and Gomorrah, pulled him out of that pit. But Lot's wife, even though she wanted to go forward, her mind, <laughs> tell him to look back. Amen. Still looking back. I want to go forward, but there's something behind me that I don't want to leave back there. Guess what? If you're not willing to come up out of your past, you will not have a perfect or decent present. And if your present is not intact, there's no future. You have to come out your past. 
You got to come out of that yesterday into this midnight hour where God can bless you and proceed you into the morning hour, which is one minute past that midnight hour, mm -hmm. which will be the beginning of your new day, your new relationship with God. Uh, come, oh, Lord, Henry. come mm -hmm. on, let's, let's go on to the next thing. Our lives are not to be lived as if Jesus would come. Well, let me back up and say this. Our lives, or we should live today as if Jesus is on his way today. We should live our life as though God is about to strain on this earth today, right now. That's how we ought to be living. And I'm not saying living in fear, but I'm saying living in, live in expectancy. Knowing that if he come today, good God Almighty, I'm ready. Knowing that if you come today, you truly said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. Amen. At the midnight, God moves at midnight. Let us go on. We're getting ready to go on to some place there. We're going to go on now to Acts. We're going to go on to Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 25. And, and, and then we're going to Acts because it is said that this particular brother here, Paul, wrote a large portion, portion of the New Testament. A large portion of the New Testament. So we want to see what Paul said and how he reacted to God moving at midnight. Mm -hmm. Was he prepared when God had to move at midnight? What was he thinking about at midnight? Mm -hmm. Acts chapter uh, 16, please. And I believe we want to start at verse 25. Verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed mm -hmm. and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Mm. Now, now, now start with it. It says that at midnight, Paul and Silas mm -hmm. prayed. It doesn't mean they began to pray exactly at midnight, but rather that they were, were still praying at midnight had begun sometime earlier. In other words, you don't wait until God comes before you start getting your house in order. Paul and Silas began to pray the first moment they find themselves in a dire situation. The first moment they realized that something wasn't moving right, they began to pray. Now it said that, and, and, and if you read back up, go up to verse 22. And read, uh, 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 yeah, go to 22. And the multitude rose up to gather against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Paul and Silas had been arrested, falsely accused. Falsely accused. How many times have you been falsely accused by something that you know nothing about? But so Paul and Silas had been arrested, falsely accused. Had their clothes run off of them, being beaten. Read on. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Mm -hmm. Who have received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stocks. Now listen to what it said. You think prison is hard now. You ain't seen nothing like what they was in me in. We talking about like beyond, beyond the dungeon dungeon. <laughs> we talking about in the lowest part of the dungeon dungeon. We talking about, you talking about when Paul said, when David said, Lord deliver me from the mercury and miry clay. That's what they was down in. Mud and mire. Ain't going nowhere because the mud and everything is so thick. How can they wade in and get anywhere? Get away. You can't get nowhere. I believe, Lord, we complain about so much today if we only knew. If we only could go back and visit the yesterdays of life mm. itself. Prayerfully, our whole mindset and thoughts would change. Who, be, who in a jail receives such a charge, meaning that he could point at them even more if he decided to do. You in prison and you study getting beat if you want to feel like he want to whoop on you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. 
So he stretched them down in prison as reserved for the worst and most violent criminals of all. And they ain't did nothing. And their feet was fastened and stuck. You in the mud and miry clay and your feet is still locked up with chains and things. Where in the world can you go? How humiliate, not just being in prison, not just being in jail, but being humiliated even more by putting in the lowest part of it and having your feet locked up and everything. You can barely move. And if, and, and if you read the history, it's in, when they put you in, in, in down the land and put you in stuff, they, when they locked you up, they like spread eagle. You know the terminology, spread eagle. Your legs were pulled apart and you were locked down. Your hands were pulled apart and you were locked down. You ain't going nowhere. Period. Mm. Legs were pulled apart, wide apart. Individual legs on their backs on the floor. After a short time, the muscles in the leg will begin to, what you call it, constrict or tramp up, get in pain. You laying down on the floor, your arms way out here, your legs way out here, <laughs> and everywhere, you just there for hours and hours on your back. Mm. Ain't going nowhere. All you can hope for, Lord, come on, it's midnight. Come on, move, Lord. That's all you can hope for. That's how Paul and Silas were. Let me get back over here to that there, because I want you to read that. Read the next verse. Let me get back to it. Uh, well, thank you, Jesus. Where were we at there? You're reading Acts. Acts, yeah, we're reading Acts. Acts chapter, uh, mm, chapter, mean, 16. Like, chapter 16. Yes. I got a little excited there, Lord. <laughs> it's all right. I have Acts chapter 16. And uh, what verse will we, do we leave off in there? We left off at 26. Okay, now read 26. Let's go back to 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, ah. so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, mm -hmm. and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. Now listen, now remember what I said, they laying there on their backs, spread eagle, arms wide, tied up, both their legs tied up, both their on their backs. Pain like I don't know what. And immediately they said that suddenly there was an earthquake. But but before the earthquake, let me say, it said, and Paul and Silas prayed mm. though, and sang praises to God. Mm. You laying there. Legs spread over, arms spread over tight. They wouldn't have no loose where they could move around. And all you could think about was, Lord, let me just pray and let me sing songs to God. And I know if I do this, something's going to happen because I love God. I serve God. He know I'm his child. That's all you can think about. Hey. Read on. And it said the other prisoner heard him. You're in prison. And, 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 and some of us today, you're going to sing and carry them. Won't y'all be quiet? I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Shut up that noise down there. Oh, Christian. Read on. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed them, would have killed himself, mm -hmm. supposing that the prisoners had been had been fled. And it says suddenly from the praying and the praising, praying and praising and singing songs, praying, praising, singing songs, Lord, I, I know this is going to be all right. Lord, I know it's been so good. They sang these songs down there while they locked up in prison. Lord, I know you've been so good. You watched over me. This is what they're doing. And it says, suddenly there was an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there was an earthquake. I mean, right now, all of a sudden, good God, there was an earthquake, and the change of things fell off of them. What the word? <laughs> God moved at midnight. Can you imagine being in that jail like that? Laying on your bike. Chained down on your bike. Your legs and arms can't move and all of a sudden you get to catch your cramps and things. You can't do nothing but lay there. And you singing these songs to God. And you praising God. And I heard Paul, I, I can imagine now Paul and Silas talking and, and Silas laying beside Paul said, Paul, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? If, if, if we we got to do something, we got to pray. And Paul said, we're going to sing. He said, because I know one thing, because it said down there that this Roman soldiers go to sleep at midnight. Paul knew they go to sleep at midnight because Paul himself 
was a part of the establishment at one point when he was Saul. So he knew what was going to happen. So he looked at he looked at Saul and said, I'm telling you what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Because at the midnight hour, I know God will come through. Why? Because he moves at midnight. And the verse goes on to say that at midnight, suddenly there was an earthquake. And after the earthquake, the band loosened. And God moved so much that that soldier pulled out his sword and wanted to kill himself. <clears throat> See, God will make your enemy be at peace with you. That's right. God moved at midnight. So I applaud you. Make sure that in your midnight hour that you don't find yourself just weary down sleeping and slumbering. But you find yourself still alert enough, even when you sleep, that in your mind, so your spiritual mind, and you dreaming of whatever it can be, is focusing on God. Because at that very time, God will move for you at that midnight hour. He will move at midnight for you. You know what midnight he means? Midnight is a 12 o'clock. That's midnight. It's the middle period of the night. The midnight hour. That's what midnight is. It's the middle period of the night, the midnight hour, when everything seemed to be so dead and dreary. God is still moving. Amen. Still moving. Midnight is a deep, ex a deep, extended darkness. Midnight is a gloomy part of life. A gloomy time. But guess what? That's when God come through. That's when he really works at that time when you everything is so gloomy, when everything seems to be so deep, when everything seems to be so dark in your life. That's when God will move. Midnight as a synonym is a bewitched hour. It's getting dark. It's 12 o'clock. Y'all better get in the house now. A bewitched hour, a, a time, a, a, a moment that's been labored as darkness, as wrong, as, as, as death and stuff like that. That's what meant they've been labeled like that as a synonym. But God is still moving at that midnight hour. Midnight means the dead of night. When everything seemed to be asleep. Because the seventh thing goes to sleep when they die, die, flowers and things, they die, die, in other words, they die. But yet they're still alive. The dead hour of night. Midnight. The transition time from one day to the next day. That's with midnight. So in that transitional time from one day to the next day, God has transferred his energy, his life, his breath, his 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 his, his boldness, his uh, 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 his love, he has transferred his goodness, his mercy, and his grace unto you. So what I'm saying, I'm saying to you, church, that God moves at midnight. Be ready at midnight. Don't sleep and slumber at midnight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God, we thank you. That concludes our message for the day. We're hoping that you got something from this message, David. Because I'm going to tell you something. I did. I, I believe in my heart. I feel in my spirit that God really moved in this particular message that you all who are, who are listening to the service this morning will truly be blessed by this message. We are here at the Steel Free Minutes. All we want to do is give to you what God has given to us. We want to bless you like God is blessing us. And some people may say, well, how are you being blessed? I'm being blessed because at this very moment, I'm talking to you. And that's a blessing. Because I know, and I know it for a fact, that men laid down last night and didn't wake up this morning. So we are thanking God for the time that he allows us to be to be with you. And I want to tell you, and when things are going bad, we know what to do. Put a Let, praise on. We put a praise on. So until we see you all again, beware of your midnight hour. Know that God moves, and he can move at midnight. Midnight mm. again, meaning he can move at your deepest, worst moment in your life. That's a midnight. He'll move when you seem like there's no hope. That's that midnight. He'll move when you seem like there's nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. That's the midnight. That's when God will move. And all you got to do is move toward him. He said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. Move toward him. Let us pray. Father, O Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, once again we come before your throne of grace. O Heavenly Father, we thank you for mercy. We thank you for grace. We have to thank you for mercy and grace, for God. We believe today, Father God, that your word has gone forward and that it will reach the hearers, Father God. And as they listen to it, Father God, they, they will be blessed by it. We believe that they'll be blessed by it. We believe here at the Steelfish Ministry that what we are doing, we are doing it for you, O oh God, and that people will be blessed. Because when we put you first, Father God, 
even in our midnight hour, when it comes along, you will provide for us and make a way. I laid down last night, Father, not knowing what we will talk about today. But in the wee hours in the morning, Father, you gave me a revelation and you put this on my heart to give to your people. So that from the steer for your ministry, our family here, Father, we have given them what you gave us. And we realize, Father God, if we don't do what you call us to do, that our midnight hour, Father God, will simply leave us in dungeon and drudgery. So we praise you and we thank you right now. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're praying for those families. For those children, those victims who was hurt during this week, Father God, at school shooting. And we are praying for each and every individual who have lost someone this year, Father God, at this present time. We're we just praying for these family, Father God. We're praying for healing, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We're sending forth, Father God. We're praying that thou will send forth ministering angels, Father God, to minister their hearts, mind, and their spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Touch all our schools, Father, because there are a lot of things that's going on now. The COVID is out there, Father. Violence is out there. We need you to step in and step in on time because you are on time, God. Or oh, touch parents today, Father God. Heal them, Father God. Minister their hearts, mind, and soul. Touch our educators all around, Father God. We need you to go to the White House and the outhouse, Father, and move mighty and strong like only you can do. Father God, that's a time when we must realize that you will come. We don't want to be like the five foolish virgins. We want to make sure that we have enough awe, we have enough love, we have enough pride, we have enough dignity, yes. we have enough words in our heart, we have enough of everything you've given us, Father God, to be able to wait and be still and see what you have for us, Father, in the name of Jesus. What direction we should take next? We don't want to be as the foolish virgin, O oh God. We want to know for sure that when you call our names, O oh God, that we'll be ready. So, Father God, right now, your hour of time are coming. The midnight hour when you move, Father God, in our lives, we want to be ready, prepared, and willing to say, Here I am, Lord. Use me. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. We want to be like Barnabas, Father God, an instrument to be used for your word, for your praise, your glory. So if we thank you and we praise you. From the still free of ministry, Father God, we want you to know that we love you. And for the people that we are praying for and the listeners, we want you all to know that we love you in the name of Jesus. So again, we just want to say, amen, Lord. We love you. When things are going bad, what do we do? Put a praise on it. When things are going good, what do we do? Put a praise Put on a it. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. On it. God bless you. We love you. Until next time, if we don't see you again, Merry Christmas. Bye. Yes.